So our next um, item on the agenda is our fireside chat. We're going back to New Brunswick for this, um, moderated by Francisco Quevedo, one of the professors in the marketing department. And his guest is Tomas Hernandez, who is a Salvadorian Bitcoin project advisor. Um, and so I will turn it over to New Brunswick. Thank you. Um, will I be able to see Tomas? Oh, there he is. All right. Tommy, as I call him, um, we know him, we've known each other for many, many years. He's not that old. Um, <clears throat> he um, he's, has a, a, a bachelor's degree in engineering. He has a master's degree in political science. Um, and he's doing a, a, a master's in finance, I believe, at, at Harvard University right now, online, which you know I think is in line with everything we're saying here. All right, he has a presentation, so I'll have questions at the end. So the microphone is yours, uh, Tommy. Okay, uh, let me know if you see my screen, please. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to start. Thank you, Francisco, for the, for the intro. Um, well, um, it's more than, a, than a, uh, an honor and a, and a privilege to be sharing this information with you. Uh, so I'm going to go right in and um, start talking about, you know, what is Bitcoin beyond uh, the narrative? Okay, so... Um, I want to define what is going to be our starting point. And our starting point is going to be um, the end of 2021, okay? Um, I'm gonna cover some things about the context, about how the behavior and the pattern has changed for, from uh, many users. What's the status of the legal framework, El Salvador as a case study, and then what has been the most interesting thing about El Salvador regarding the, techno regarding the technology, uh, and then just some facts to, to actually understand the, uh, the Bitcoin. So um, when we see what happened in 2021, we can actually see that, that it was a great year okay, for the crypto industry. Uh, we're talking about a, an industry that ended 2021 at almost $2.7 trillion. So if you compare it to, uh, to uh, Google, to Microsoft, uh, to Apple, I mean, they were like right there. Uh, if you compare it to other industries, such as the telecommunications industry uh, or automobile, you know, it was right in the middle. I'm, I'm talking numbers worldwide. So, so the crypto industry was definitely uh, something that that you know caught the attention of, of many people during 2021. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard on the news uh, about this uh, something called crypto winter. Okay, and I, I and I say something because it's very hard to define. Uh, 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 of course. Uh, this the crypto assets have you know are very volatile assets and 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 uh, their value definitely has been affected. But uh, guess what? Also, the entire world has been affected. Okay, um, when you see the numbers post pandemic, okay, and when you see what has happened uh, in the world, you know by the consequences of the world war in Ukraine and Russia then uh, you don't have to be very smart to actually understand that, you know, everything that is red is bad and green is, you know, uh, good. So on the left, you have in year to date, 2022, uh, the performance of the crypto industry. And then on the right, you have the S&P 500. So as you can see, both industries have been hit very, very hard on the year 2022. So uh, it's not only that, that it's a crypto winter, that I, I, I want to label it market winter. If we actually zoom in, okay, and we talk on the last quarter, that actually crypto has outperformed the S&P 500 and is basically up to par with, with, uh, uh, with NASDAQ. So um, my, uh, uh, my narrative through the entire presentation is going to be, you know, let's talk about the facts, the numbers, and not only about what the news say. Okay, uh, 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 this is something that is that is uh, um, 
very the news are very powerful, but but you need to look at you know from from different angles. So so this is you know what happened in 2021. What are we seeing in 2022? But now what's interesting is you know what's the impact of let's say on uh, of crypto on the entire human behavior. Okay, so so for the past 20 years. Uh, you know, there has been a lot of research to actually what are the the what is going to be the technology that's going to be the substitute for cash. Um, and as you can see in the timeline, okay, we have very, very good examples. Well, uh, PayPal starting in 1998, but you can see worldwide what are uh, uh, market shares of, of many companies that uh, that actually are looking to to make a, 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 an alternative okay an alternative for uh, a payment methods okay um so um so uh this is this is something that has been ongoing and 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 when you look at those uh behaviors during covid then it, they clearly have changed okay uh on the on the lower graph uh, these are, by the way, graphs uh, um, that we made from a presentation in, in Deutsche Bank. Okay, I, I took a course in, in Harvard last year, and I, I, you know, I'm just basically sharing the information of, of, of my professor, which I found it very, very interesting. So you see on the on the lower graph, you see an upward or an increasing trend, which is the the left or dark blue uh, um, rectangle is pre-COVID. And then light blue is 2020, yellow is 2021, and then the gray one is January 2022. So that is basically the percentage that has increased in online payments. And then when you see on the upper graph, then also cash is a, is a light blue, but then it, you can see how that changes from country to country. And you see the market share that has you know uh, digital payments Debit cards or credit cards in um, in uh, in their in their behavior. Okay, so you know th that's just a fact that I want to leave there, and I, and you're gonna understand later why. Okay, when we start, you know, trying to understand what's going on on on, on the legal framework, um, the the let's say the stance of countries are are, are very defined. So um, I want to basically applaud what's going on with the European Central Bank because it, it has taken a very progressive stand. Um, it has their, their uh, regulatory framework. Um, they meet often, you know, to try to respond to this demand. Just a few weeks ago, they met on, on the Bank, bank of France on, on this tokenization uh, uh, talks. And, and um, many countries in the European Union actually accept cryptocurrency. Now, in that in that meeting, that Bank of France meeting, uh, Jerome Powell had a very strong st stance regarding crypto. Okay, and that and his stance basically, you know, echoes the the stand of the Fed, which is not a surprise. A very pro establishment uh, 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 stance, saying that you know, if someone is going to create money, then of course the Fed needs to take a a, a role there. Uh, it's a huge paradox, especially right now, especially, you know, uh, after the numbers that were published yesterday in the middle of a recession, inflation uh, uh, um, uh, year to date at, at 8%. So uh, it, it just, you know, it, it's surprising to say the least, the, 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 the role or, or the position that, that the Fed is taking, um, especially because, you uh, to my understanding, it's not something they they understand still. So so they're trying to regulate something that you know ha, ha, has a lot of things to do before. And then you have countries like Canada or, or United Arab Emirates or Estonia, who are very pragmatic. Okay, it's it's uh, relative easy to get a crypto license there. I can share my experience uh, um, on on the on the United Arab Emirates. And it's very simple. And then after you have that license, you know, you can start basically operating on the country and then you can go to a bank and, you know, and open your bank account. It, it, it's very simple. Okay. And it's very pragmatic. Of course, you have countries such as China, Egypt, Bolivia, which, you know, crypto is prohibited, 
But then you have other countries like El Salvador or Central African Republic that have Bitcoin as legal tender. So you see this uh, sort of like uh, illustrates the, what's going on on, on, on jurisdictions. Um, something that is very interesting is the how the narrative or how the, the interest, I would say, of central banks have changed during the last four years. So, so um, central banks are discussing a lot what is the CBDCs or central bank digital currency. Uh, um, when you, the, the upper graph just basically says the amount of central banks that are actually doing research, serious research, or even pilots regarding uh, CBDCs, okay? And then in the map, on the on, on the lower map, then you can see, you know, which, which are the countries. So central banks are talking about CBDCs, okay? Some are mo uh, more advanced than others, but this is something that is, you know, happening uh, um, as we speak. So as you can see, I mean, the world is changing. I mean, we're talking about Web3s, uh, NFTs, CBDCs, cryptocurrency, crypto, crypto assets, it's not so simple to regulate all these new things, all, all, all the progress, all the future with, with you know, uh, some regulations that, 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 you know, do not apply, okay? And um, basically that takes me to the, 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 to El Salvador because El Salvador is something that we should see and understand in that context, okay? Um, for, for those of you that, that, don't know the details. El Salvador is the smallest country in Central America. We're talking about 21,000 square kilometers, roughly the size of Massachusetts, okay? It's a very small economy, $28 billion, uh, which actually 25% of that economy depends on remittances, okay? Uh, just fun fact, 98% uh, 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 of the Salvadorians, of the almost 3 million Salvadorians that are, live outside, live in the, in the U.S., okay? So um, all the numbers that you see on the top are at the end of 2021, you can see an increase on the GDP uh, of 10.3%. Uh, exports have increased, energy have increased. And, and, and then you see at the bottom, okay, some, some numbers that are very interesting, which is, you know, President Bukele, you've probably heard of him. And, and, and Bukele has had a huge approval of, of his administration, of his work, um, between 88 and 92% in all the polls. Just yesterday, Gallup uh, published a, a, a poll, and um, he was um, described as the as the best president in in Latin America with uh, eighty six percent, I think it was yesterday. So um, again, I mean, these are very interesting numbers for any president, and you know he's been on, on power for about three years, um, and you know it is what it is. Those those are the numbers. Um, El Salvador used to be okay the most dangerous country in the world, okay. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking something that happened like decades ago, okay? In 2015, El Salvador was the most dangerous country in the world um, with more than 100 uh, homicides per, per 100,000 citizens. And uh, uh, you know the numbers have changed. Uh, there has been a lot uh, uh, of public policy uh, oriented to, to actually make the country more secure, Right now, uh, on the past six months, there are over 50,000 uh, gang members in jail. Um, and I share this with you because this is part of the case study. And then you, you're going to understand on the next slide why. Because these numbers are also from El Salvador, okay? 70% of El Salvador depends on informal economy, okay? But also, 72% of the country is actually unbanked, okay? It's excluded from the banking system. So what are the consequences, okay, of this? Is that you actually have informal loans or, or shark loans that happen day to day. And many of the people, okay, that actually lead those shark loans are, you know, gang members, okay? They are the ones who, who, who actually collect the money. In 2019, the number was calculated by $785 million, okay? And that annual rate of those loans was calculated on 
This was a, a study made by Avanza. Avanza is the local banking association, which actually aggravates all the banks in the country. So, so this is something that is very sad and that happens day to day in the country. Okay. Now, you know, there are many reasons why, why uh, uh, the country started the financial inclusion project, which you've heard on the news, but this was one of the, one of the main reasons. Okay. You know, it's a country that uh, uh, depends a lot on the informal economy that depends on remittances and uh, remittances the, 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 the number that stays, you know, on a third party because of the fee every time it says a, a remittance is cal calculated around 5 to 10%, okay? So it's a lot of money, okay, that actually does not enter uh, uh, the country. So, you know, what is this financial inclusion project about? Uh, well, it's an app uh, which actually has over 4 million users registered. It's a lot of users. Uh, um, the scalability of that was a tremendous challenge. Uh, just the biggest bank in the country has 1.2 million users. Okay, um, it has the the ecosystem has over 200 ATMs in which we can withdraw or deposit money, uh, um, physical money or just on chain transactions. Uh, 70 education spots, which are spots that. You know, people go there and start asking questions if they have problem with their wallet or or, or things like that. Uh, numbers that you have to bear in mind is zero fees, okay? And those zero fees are very very interesting, okay? These are fees that are absorbed by by uh, by the country, uh, meaning that no fees from credit card transactions when they deposit money, no fees when they make an exchange, and no fees on the blockchain when you make the transaction, okay? But what, what's actually more the most important thing uh, about the case study in, in El Salvador is the two seconds, okay? And, and why do I say this? Because with Bitcoin, they, they, there is a huge, uh, um, the, I mean, the, the, the visualization of Bitcoin divides them two, okay? You have people that think Bitcoin is a crypto asset, which you should hold, compared to gold, like digital gold, it's also being named. And, and, you know, just as any asset, okay, you need to hold it. But there are other people that think that, you know, Bitcoin can be used as a means of payment. Now, what is tricky about this? That an on-chain on transaction, okay, uh, because of the confirmation between the parties can take up to two or three hours, okay? So, um, I'm going to make an example. If, if, if uh, I want to say, if I want to send Francisco uh, $1,000 uh, worth of Bitcoin, okay? So I, I use Binance, he uses Coinbase, and then, you know, he just give me his, his address and, and, and I send it. He's not going to receive that right away, okay? He's probably going to get that in two or three hours. Now, two, two or three hours is a lot, but I just want to make a parenthesis. What is a lot? Okay, because between businesses, okay, if you want to make a, a transaction, if you want to wire money between two, let's say, smaller, medium sized companies that do not live in the same uh, country, okay, so uh, in El Salvador, I'm trying to save Francisco money to his company in the US, that could take up to two or three days, okay, so 72 hours to send to, uh, for, to actually send someone money is ridiculous on the year 2022, okay? But on Bitcoin standards, you know, two or three hours is a lot of money. So that's why the technology that we've adopted to make this possible, a two second transaction, it's very, very uh, um, interesting. And that's something that's called the Lightning Network, okay? So uh, what is the Lightning Network? It's just basically a second layer uh, of technology built on Bitcoin that allows users to transact without needing, you know, a, a, an on-chain settlement, okay? Um, to, to, to explain it or to understand it more graphically, this is what, what the network looks, okay? So you have nodes, okay, which can be operated uh, personally or, or by a company. And then you start making the channels to connect those, those uh uh, th those nodes, okay? So what's, what happens here is that we have 
uh, of course, we have a provider that that is our provider of those of those nodes. Okay, River Financial. They just published a very interesting uh, um, um, study uh, two days ago, I think. And uh, um, and basically, what they do is, you know, to all the commerce and 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 that we have here in the country, let's say uh, Starbucks or McDonald's or things like that, um, their wallet is integrated, you know, via Lightning Network. With uh, uh with the country's nodes, and then when people go there, you know you can buy a coffee, and just you know in two or three seconds, you, the 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 cashier is going to have your money. Okay, so this is one of the most important thing, and defies everything that 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 that's going on on Bitcoin. Okay, because it, this is not a story. This is something that actually is happening. I mean, it is possible to have Bitcoin as means means of payment. The network has a very big capacity. Okay, um, you know it has grown a lot from 2018 since it started. Um, it currently right now has over 5,000 bitcoins worth uh, of capacity. I mean that's just uh, the amount that 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 money that you know if you sum up like like all the nodes what it has. Okay, and and that leads me okay to some facts. Okay, so so as I said at the beginning, you know, Bitcoin as a means of payment, it's possible. Okay, now there are three things that that you can that many people and many news repeat every day, which is, uh, you know, Bitcoin is very dangerous uh, for for money laundering. Okay, or crypto uh, as an industry is very it's very dangerous uh, because um, it has no track and you know and people can do crazy things. Um, well, that's actually true for cash. Okay. I mean, that's why, you know, drug lords and, and terrorists and, you know, they, they use cash as a means of payment because it actually leaves absolutely no track. But what's actually is possible on the blockchain is that everything that happens on the blockchain, you can trace it. Okay. There are numbers of, of very good providers. Okay. That, um, that can actually, uh, uh, um, you know, study everything that goes on on, on on the compliance screen transactions and and just basically tell the user if that transaction is actually safe or not. Okay, then you have you know our our crypto industries uh, can they tax them and then you can actually do that. Uh, um, the the U.S. is just the best example in that. Uh, you know, getting a lot of the of the miners that were kicked out of uh, China and and Kazakhstan. You know, they opened their arms in Texas and Florida, and they're mining there. And basically, you know, they're getting taxed as any other industry. And then those you know those companies that are crypto related. You know, when they're gonna deposit the money in the bank. You know the banks just tell them you know you know where are these funds coming from what's the origin of the funds and just like any industry you know you need to 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 make a proper kyc and make a proper compliance and then that's just basically the convergence uh just to finish up uh, uh you know if you want to say something uh, uh, of el salvador this is an ongoing project this is a case study uh, um, it has a lot to learn it has a lot to grow uh, but it's actually defined a lot of concepts related, uh, regarding technology and regarding Bitcoin and making it possible. And uh, regarding crypto, I mean, they're not going away. Okay, just as banks are not going away, crypto isn't going away. Uh, uh, I am a true fan and true believer that you know an eventual convergence uh, uh, is going to is going to take us there to make it possible. Okay, um, that's. Uh, that's it for 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 the time presentation, and I'm uh, open to questions, Francisco. All right, uh, thank you, Tommy. Um, I'll give you two seconds to send me a thousand dollars. Then, um, yeah, you said two seconds. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions here in the room or in Newark? All right, CK, you have a question. Hello, I enjoyed your talk on El Salvador and as you were talking about Bitcoins, I was wondering whether the government will lose the power 
if the bitcoins are used because they will not be printing currency or will they and then you know what will be the value of the bitcoin vis-a-vis -vis the printed currency right the question is about risk tommy uh, political risk and uh vis-a-vis -vis the uh weight of the of the uh, bitcoin investment okay yeah against uh print, printed currency right so it's a matter of risk and equivalence if you wish the question okay um very interesting question thank you um so the currency in el salvador is uh us dollars okay and just uh last year uh, they also made, made bitcoin legal tender okay so um actually we el salvador doesn't print any money okay uh, um they can't uh, uh, so just as they can print money, they can't print Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, um, you know, that, that's, that's one of the, the most interesting things. Okay. Uh, um, and that's what I was saying that, that, that it's funny because the, the situation that's going on right now, uh, on the U S regarding inflation, it's because the fed actually printed a lot of money during the pandemic. Okay. And now there's, you know, they're trying to fix the impacts on those actions, but but I want to take your question to also um, to also say something. Okay, the El Salvador has a position on Bitcoin. Okay, and sometimes on the news they say, well, uh, El Salvador is going on default because you know Bitcoin has lost uh, uh, sixty percent of its value. Okay, so. I just again i'm going with with numbers okay if el salvador okay loses everything that the position that they have on bitcoin okay it will it will, it will lose something between 50 and 100 million dollars okay have any of you seen a country go default by losing 100 million dollars okay and the answer is going to be no I said the size of the economy was $28 billion, okay? So that's roughly 0.2%, okay? So even, even if the Bitcoin value goes to zero, okay, it can happen. I mean, this is something that, that nobody controls, okay? But even if it goes to zero, okay, then, um, uh, you know, the country is not going to collapse, okay? So, so uh, regarding your question, the, uh, the seller cannot print money and cannot print Bitcoin. All right, we're short on time, CK. A question, thank you. Really appreciated how you went through the narrative and unbanked. And I just want to get your opinion on who you think developed world versus developing worlds will most benefit from this worldwide currency, be it Bitcoin, Ether, and all the rest. A great question. Um, I would say the uh, the countries that are on, on their path to 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 develop. Uh, I mean, because um, it's it's easier, it's faster, uh, and you just need basically you need a phone. Okay, uh, um, the 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 number of, of smartphones that are in El Salvador it's like almost two to one. Okay, it's it's something that is absurd. Okay, it's like. Uh, uh, they have like a 4 million um, uh, size on, on the population that it's over uh, 18 and they have like 7 million registered cell phones. Okay. And again, this is, this, this is one of the poorest countries and the smallest countries in, in, in Latin America. So, so I would say for sure the, the, the undeveloped countries are going to benefit more. And um, again, it's easier, it's, it's faster. And um, it doesn't have to be everything, you know, regal, uh, related to, to, to crypto. I mean, people can have those digital wallets and eventually make uh, integration with, with, with other crypto assets. But, but um, it, for sure, the, the only developed countries. All right. Thank you, Tommy. Un abrazo.